when you're showing a graph of values that are large but very close to each other, the default type of graph that you're seeing here, the audience isn't really going to see the difference in the values very much. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take this graph and then show them this for context and be able to zoom in on a graph that now shows the difference in those values very clearly. We're doing all of this in PowerPoint. So let me go to show you the PowerPoint window here. So it's actually two slides. Slide number one has the original graph for context starting at zero for the measurement, and it's really hard to see the difference. Slide two has that exact same graph, but I've changed the minimum and maximum on the vertical axis and added data labels, so now those differences are very clear. Let me show you how I did that. So I've duplicated the first slide here, and we're going to start with this slide. And what you want to do is you want to format this first so it's got all of the column widths, the colors, everything that you need, the size of the font for the months down here, whatever you need it to be. And then I'm going to duplicate this slide. So I'll just press Control D to duplicate the slide. And on my second slide here, the graph, I'm going to start by adjusting the vertical axis. And this is the main thing that is going to help us do that zooming in. So I'll select the vertical axis. I'll press Control-1 to bring up the formatting pane. And here's where I make the change, the minimum and maximum here. So the, the maximum is going to stay the same. The minimum I'm going to set to be, in this case, 16,000, which is, I can see the grid line here. Every value is above that. So you want to make sure all the values are shown, of course, when you choose this minimum. So I'm going to type in 16. Thousand. And now I can see the differences. Now what's happened is, is the maximum has automatically changed by PowerPoint. What I suggest you do is you probably want to have the maximum be set to the 18,000 because that's what it was in the original graph. So sometimes if PowerPoint goes and makes its choices, you're going to have to reset it. So set that to 18,000. Okay, now that's better. I don't actually need these individual elements here in terms of the every 200. I just need the minimum 16,000 and the maximum 18,000. So I'll set the major units to be 2,000, which is the difference between those two. And this creates what I refer to as a minimalist axis. I don't have anything showing other than the minimum and the maximum. And I want to show those because I need it to be accurate. I can now remove the grid lines. I don't need those anymore. And I'm going to add data labels. So now I'm going to add the data labels. So I'll add the data labels and I'll put them uh, outside and so they're on the top of each of the columns. And I'll go to the more options because I just want to change the uh, number formatting in the label options to a number so that I can have the comma and I don't need any decimal places here. So now I have my graph that is the zoomed in version of the graph. And the last thing I want to do is to use a transition between the first version of the graph and the second version of the graph. So I'm going to go to my second slide. I'm going to go to my transitions ribbon in PowerPoint, and I'm going to choose the transition called Zoom. So there are a whole lot of different ones that exist here, and you may not see Zoom right away. It's in this uh, exciting category. Uh, so I put my cursor over it says the previous slide zooms forward and disappears revealing the current slide which is a nice way to make it look like you're zooming in on the the data. So I'll select that and it happens very very fast. So I usually set the duration here on the transitions ribbon to somewhere between one and a half to two seconds. So I'm going to set it to two seconds here and if you want to see what this is going to look like there is always the preview here in the transitions ribbon where I can click on that and you'll see it zooms in. So this is a nice way to be able to zoom in on the data in a chart and everybody now can see the exact values and the difference in the values because you've shown them context first and then zoomed in and now they can see the difference in those values. This also works with other types of charts. So here I've got a line chart, and again, you can't really see the variation in the line very much. I apply the same idea, and now you can see that line go up and down from month to month. 
So use this technique with different types of charts, whether it's columns, bars, uh, line charts, to allow you to show context first, as we did here in the original column graph, and then you zoom in to show the details and the differences between the values. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.